All right, welcome to the first in a series of videos I'm going to be doing on the topic of Microsoft Forms and Power Automate. Specifically, our, our long-range goal is to um, look at the differences between connecting between personal and group forms uh, and how to connect each of those to a Power Automate flow or connect the Power Automate flow to a personal or group form, uh, and then also talk in later videos about file uploads because a lot of people are starting to use Microsoft Forms as a mechanism for intaking files to be stored or presented elsewhere or transmitted from one place to another and it is a great tool for that but it does require that you understand some of the differences or exactly how to work with those files once they've been uploaded to the form. Uh, so first in this video, we're going to talk specifically about the differences um, between personal and group forms and how we connect to them in Power Automate. Uh, so first off, personal forms. These, this was the first type of form that was available in Microsoft Forms. And quite simply, anyone with a license can create a personal form. Um, they can share that form with other folks. So if I create a form, I can share it with a colleague to help me add questions to it or let them view the results, etc. Um, so you have that ability to share that form, but it will always be owned by me. In fact, if I were to leave my organization, that form would be lost as well. So something really important to, um, to understand the li that limitation of personal forms, um, that they will disappear when the owner disappears. So if you have sort of a business need that is ongoing beyond the, the time span that that particular user is in your org, then you'll want to not use a personal form. Um, now also in terms of the files that are uploaded to a form, uh, when you add a file upload question, you're prompted to allow that to use your OneDrive or create a folder in OneDrive. So basically any files that are attached to a personal form go in that you created will go into a special folder in your OneDrive uh, in your tenant. Uh, and it's really important to note that even while you can share the form for collaborating or result viewing, uh, sharing the form does not share those uploaded files. So simply saying, okay, here's a link to the results, won't let other people access those files that have been uploaded. And yet another reason to use something like Power Automate to take those files and do something with them, put them somewhere that is accessible. Yes, you could simply go to OneDrive and share that folder. That's probably the shortest and cleanest thing to do. Um, but sometimes you don't want to sh just share that folder with whoever you're sharing the form with. Now, contrasting that, group forms came along a little bit later. Uh, and essentially the idea here is that when you have a Microsoft 365 group, whether it's a team in Microsoft Teams, a group in Outlook, a plan in Microsoft Planner, uh, all of those things create a Microsoft 365 group. And any member of any Microsoft 365 group can create a form associated with that group. And when a form is associated with the group, any member of the group can access the form, can edit the form, can view the response data, etc. Now these forms, like personal forms, can also be shared with people outside of the group. Um, so you can, if you need to bring some, you know, allow someone who is not a member of your group to edit the form or to view the responses, you can do that um, with the same limitations as personal forms. Now the main difference with group forms in terms of there are two differences. First off, longevity or, or persistence. Unlike those personal forms that are bound to the owner or the creator and will disappear when that owner or creator leaves, group forms are connected to the group. So as long as the group remains in, you know, in existence, those forms will remain in existence. So if you have people or, or situations, processes where you need a form that is not bound to a particular user, then you'll want to create a group so that you can create group forms or create that form as a group form so that it can be you know, ownership can be transferred from one person to the next by simply adding them to that group. Now, the other difference with group forms is that when files are uploaded, when you add that file upload question, it prompts you 
to you know, let you know that it's going to create a location in SharePoint. And all of these different group types get a SharePoint team site. And in that SharePoint team site, there's a library, a document library called Documents. And that's where these files are going to be stored. There's actually a specific path, which we'll talk about in just a minute, um, where all of those files that are uploaded to the form are stored. And again, just like with the personal form, if you share the form with people outside of your group, it does not give them access to the uploaded files, again, because the files are stored in SharePoint, not attached specifically to the form response. All right, so specifically where those form or where the files get stored is shown here. So again, personal forms or group form. That would be the My Files area in OneDrive or the Documents Library in SharePoint. From that point on, the path is the same. There will be a folder called Apps, a folder called Forms, and then a folder with the name of your form. So if the form is called Personal Form, then that folder will be called Personal Form. And then the within that Form folder, there will be a folder for each file upload question. So if the file, if the, you have a question that says, please upload, upload your resume here, then that folder will be called, please upload your resume here. Uh, that's an important point because folder names, for a variety of reasons, you want to tr try to keep those folder names somewhat brief. So I recommend when you first create that question, create it with a very brief name like resume so that the folder will get created with a name like resume. Um, it'll just save you some, some headaches in the long run to have a shorter folder name. Now there's also a slight difference in how we connect these forms to uh, a Power Automate flow. So just to show you an example here, we've got a personal form called One Personal Form. And I want to create a flow that will run every time someone submits this form um, or submits an entry to this form. So I'm going to go over to my Power Automate tab and go to the Create page and I'll select Automated Cloud Flow because this is an automated process every time someone submits a personal form. So when a new response is submitted to a Microsoft form, I want this to run. So I'm going to call this Personal Form Flow, really obvious name. Click Create. And then I need to tell it which form I want to connect to. And you'll see I have created a whole bunch of different forms here. So I'm going to, I know for a fact that my personal form, one personal form, is going to show up at the end because I put a space at the beginning of the name just to control where it showed up. So I'm going to select that. Uh, but you'll notice that the two personal form is not here anywhere. So it's not at the top. It's also not at the bottom. I won't make you look through every single form that I've created, but you trust me when I say that that group form that I created is not here. And that'll come back. We'll come back to that in, in just a minute. Now, once I've, this is our trigger action. The next thing I need to do is get the re details of that response. So get response details. Uh, incidentally, this trigger, when a new response is submitted, and this action, get response details, are the only things in, uh, the only actions in the forms connector. So they're really the only things you can do with forms. Uh, there is no action to update a form or delete a form or create a form. So it is a little bit limited, but not terrible. Uh, so basically, again, I need to select the same form ID, and then the response ID is going to be dynamic content from the trigger. So when this trigger fires, it's going to say, hey, a new form response is here, was submitted, here's the response ID. This action will then go to that form and get the response with that ID. So I'll just hit save. And that's that for creating a, connect, a form connected to a, I'm sorry, a flow connected to a personal form. Now, if I want to do the same to create a flow connected to a group form, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to again select the same trigger and I'll, in this case, I'll call it group form flow and click create. But as I said, that 
group form is not going to show up in this list because this list does not, it's kind of not smart enough uh, or not scoped to show group forms. Um, I'm guessing because group forms came along later, maybe it wasn't really in, you know, the, the, the forms team and the Power Automate team didn't really maybe foresee people wanting to connect to group forms as readily as they connect to personal forms, uh, but it is certainly possible to do. Um, and you can do that by scrolling all the way to the bottom. And you probably don't have as many forms as I do, so it might be a shorter trip. But select the last item there, which is enter custom value. Um, now what I need to do is get the form ID for my group form. So in our group form, just called conveniently to group form, I've got you know a text question, file upload question. And if I look in the URL, I'm going to see the text form ID equals. And what I need to do is get everything after that. Uh, so this is going to start with a dash and the letter U and continue on. And in my experience, all of my form IDs seem to end with a capital W and a lowercase c and a lowercase u. Um, your form IDs might not have that same convention, follow that same convention, but chances are they will. Bottom line is you're looking for a blob of text about that long. It'll be made up of letters, numbers, and dashes. Um, so we're going to highlight all that, copy it, and then go into our flow and paste that in there. Now it will not resolve that big ugly ID into a name. So for your own sanity later when you come back to this flow, you can add a note and put in you know, form name to group form, just so that in three months or six months when you're going back and trying to troubleshoot something, you'll know, okay, this flow is firing or, or is connected to this group form. You don't have to do that, but as someone who's been down this road a bunch of times, it's a good idea. And again, we're gonna add that same step here to get response details. And again, I need to select all the way at the bottom, enter custom value, paste in that same big ugly form ID. And in the response ID, I'm gonna again select the response ID from the trigger. Uh, so that's it. So now I have, you know, a flow for my personal form and a flow for my group form. Um, and you now know how to connect to those. So again, the trick with the group form is to go to the group form, go to the URL, get that form ID and plug it into the trigger and the get response detail action as a custom value. Um, so that's a f our first video in the series. We're going to come back and in the next video, um, talk about kind of how the difference in where these personal and group forms store uh, their files is going to impact how we work with those files. And I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler, it really doesn't. You might think that it does, which can cause some confusion, but at the end of the day, uh, you're going to work with them the same way, but it's important to understand some background uh, of why you're going to work with them the same way. So we'll, we'll dig into that in the next video. So thank you and have a great day.